you broke down out of your channel. The only time you wouldn't necessarily make that a cell is if you want to expand out your line. But you start stepping forward, you get another cell right there. Um, really, if I were watching this market and I had a price bar that hit at that price, I could actually put in a sell order. So I'm going to get rid of my buy. I'm just using these lines as examples. I could say, you know, I'm going to put in the sell right here, right? I could say if the market breaks out of this channel down to that price, enter in short, you step it forward, it hits that value, and then at that point you are short this market, okay? And then it's just a matter of waiting, right? You put in your stop loss up above, make it a jump stop, make it a jump trail. Um, actually, at this point, you come back in, and all of a sudden you've got um, a new declining channel. You could go through, put in your, and since we're going short, it'd be resistance and support. You're going to reverse those, depending on which direction you're going. I'm going short, but a lot of people just always say support or resistance and keep it in a long uh, format, a lot of stock traders. Um, but right here you go, you step forward, you look for a break above or below. You actually did hit right there, so you could have entered into the market short at that point. But really... You should have already been entered in short earlier on from the Bulls and Bears red sell signal. So really you're just looking for the section where you would get out, which probably would have been right there. right? You put in your stop um, to exit the trade and then wait for a signal to get back in. right? Um, so this would be a, you know, a narrow declining channel. Uh, lots of different options there as well. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple other things real quick. I'm going to go ahead and get us back to current market prices, look onto the chart, see what I see, and talk about it as we go. Let's see. Well, I wonder if I see a good Elliott wave somewhere in here. One, two, three, four, five. It's a pretty big wave. Let's see. Now, officially, I could probably make this an Elliott Wave, but it's certainly not the prettiest one I've ever seen. Elliott Wave, uh, just to chart out, you're looking for the uh, Elliott Wave pattern up here on the top right. Um, if we were to try and build this, we could actually select our first point, first wave, first retracement, second point. Now, I would want it to go a little bit earlier. I'm thinking something more along the lines of one, two. Now, I liked it more the first time. I'm going to go back to my original uh, assumption. If I were up here, we had our first retracement. We top out at our top wave three. And then at this point, you would come down to retracement there. That is the ugliest Elliott wave I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't see a clean and Elliott wave on this chart. What if we bump up to a 60-minute chart and take a look here instead? Now that guy could probably be a better one. Maybe I can make us some nice head and shoulders. How about that? Mm -hmm. If I'm looking for a head and shoulders, it's always, always on a longer time frame. And obviously, these are things you look at as you're actively looking at the market. You're going to go back through time and look through things unless you're looking for an overall trend, something longer. Um, let's see. Ooh, that's a double bottom. Hmm. Earlier on trading, though, such a mass. What about this guy? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm already doing my analysis in my head. I'm starting to go ahead and space a little bit. What would we be looking for for a head and shoulders or a top and bottom formation? I guess I could have pulled these up before I came in instead of just looking right at the chart, but what's the fun in that? Don't we like to keep me on my toes? I would think so. This could be your double bottom, except for it came down a little bit too far on that first point. I normally use your head and shoulders to actually draw out your double bottoms or double tops. This could be um, a double bottom formation. Uh, also called head and shoulders. This is actually considered your neckline. This is the left shoulder. This is the right shoulder. And you would specifically be seeing this as, all right, is this bottoming out? Is the market going to break above? Um, as you start stepping forward, you look for the break above that neck, and that's where you got your signal to go long. 
and go up from there. Okay. And uh, normally you need to do that on the lows or the highs. You don't want to be doing that right in the middle of price action, at least not normally, because it is a uh, top and bottom formation. Uh, so you're not necessarily going to be looking for um, something like right here. You could try and make one, but that's in the middle of price movement. It's not a high. It's not a low. Uh, this guy up here um, actually could form a head. If this current market does a price up right here to around this point, then this would actually end up being uh, something of a head formation. You could actually go through, draw out your left shoulder, neck, head, right shoulder. You could even use this as a projection of what's coming up if you think the market's going to come back up. Um, and you could use this as a neckline. If it breaks below, you go in short. If the market keeps going up, you just ignore it and you wait. Uh, it's just going to be a regular wave pattern there instead. Well, I know a tool we could take a look at really quick, something that you'd like. I kept showing you channels, some of the different features there, but I didn't necessarily show you how you'd have your trades waiting once that happens. Let's see here. How about we go back to my original uh, flag right here. I'm going to go ahead and make things a lot bigger for everyone. All right, a nice tool. Something that I like to take a look at and use, uh, you could go through and draw out, um, you could actually use a wedge formation as well. Well, no, this is more of a flag. They don't uh, keep using uh, inside days. So if I were to go through and draw out my trend channel again, or I could just use the line tool, drag out for this flag formation right here. Let's see. I'm thinking right about there. All right, so... You've got your formation, you've got your flag, and you've decided that you're going to enter into the market long if it breaks above or down if it breaks below. Uh, what I would normally do at this point um, is actually um, use the risk reward tool. Okay? I remember earlier when I was talking about putting in uh, your buy above the break and your sell below the break. Well, how do you work out your risk versus reward on that trade? What you can do is you can actually come up here and take a look at the risk reward tool. That's uh, red and green signals. You left click. You drag from the top of the channel to the bottom of the channel, okay, here to here. And what we've got here is, you know, your current channel height, which is around $94 for this. And then you also have some um, targets you could use to take in profit as well. So you could actually put in a signal to go short if the market breaks, if I use my crosshair tool. If the market breaks below the channel here, I could put in a short order and I could put in a profit-taking order at $91.00 if I use the cat right there. Um, or I could put in an order to go long right here. And I could even put in a profit-taking order here as well. Um, it's just a way of going through and calculating your risk versus reward. Um, usually, people will try and get uh, at least a two-to-one for that. So they would, in this specific case, try this. I would say um, that if I expect the market to break up above, I could use 91 as my um, stop loss. I could put my profit taking order. I'm going to just keep on grabbing that line tool today. I could put my profit taking order right here. I could put my entry order right here. And then I would actually have a profit of 94 and 89. You could even drag and adjust these. Say, look, all right, I put a stop loss down here, $91 back, and I have a profit taking order up here at this price right here. So I could take in a profit of 192 have a stop loss of 91 You can fine-tune and drag and adjust these right on the screen. You step your chart forward. If you get that break, you enter in. You have your stop loss in. You have your profit taking target. You keep stepping forward. You could actually place, uh, place in your trails along the way if you'd like. But some fun options there. All right, so what else could we take a look at real quick just to wrap up? Something fun to draw. How about, let's see, the arc could be a lot of fun. Fibonacci time zones is nice. I actually really like using the pitchfork. Um, it actually matches my style really well. Pitchfork along with the one, two, three in particular is what I like to do. Uh, let's go ahead and bump up to, let's say, a daily chart. Well, 
this guy right here, 